Tandem Nomads, episode 130. I'm just happy that we are bringing this facet of digital nomads into the whole expert partner discussion. It's important because it's uh, positively portrayed in the media that only can help us as expert partner. Hello, Nomad Nation. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show where you can find great inspiration and tips to grow a successful portable business and thrive in your global nomadic life. This is your host, Emel Deregi. I'm a business and marketing coach. And today, I want to discuss all about the differences and similarities between digital nomads and expat partners like most of you who are listening who want to build a portable business. And I have been in the previous episode, 127, sharing with you all the skills that I think are highly needed and could be great business ideas for you to build a portable business. And in that episode, I promised that I would come back to you with some insights about what makes a difference between a portable business and digital nomads. Uh, and also, if you remember a while back, I created an episode called The Three Reasons Why Expat Partners Should start their own business. One of them was all about the fact that it is highly time to live in our time, in our generation, and move with the pace of our market in our world today with technology and the opportunities that brings for expat partners to build a portable business. So I want to continue this conversation here with you. And before I jump in, I also want to mention that a year ago, I was invited to speak at the World Bank on the future of work and mention the example of expert partners, how they can build their portable businesses. And there we had another great guest on the show on this, uh, in this conference that was the organization called SCORE. And they shared a fantastic report about the gig economy, which is the economy of creating a side gig or um, a digital business or a small business on the side. And I thought this report was fantastically interesting for all of you who are listening here. So I'm sharing it with you in order to download it. You can go to tandemnomads.com slash 130 and you'll be able there to find the interesting numbers of people nowadays who are building their own portable businesses, but also the different fields. And the stats cover a few countries and you'll be surprised that the U.S. is not the number one country, or at least not the only country where being a digital nomad and being part of the gig economy is highly uh, trendy. So I want you to jump on this train, Nomad Nation, and to talk about this topic, I brought a great guest here who's done a great job in research in this topic, which is Katharina von Knobloch. Knobloch. Am I pronouncing your name, prop- your name properly, Katarina? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're ready for the ride, Kate? Yes, I'm absolutely ready. Thanks for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you here and share your insights on this topic. You've, got, you've done a great job here. And um, do you prefer to be called Kate or Katarina? I guess Kate is just easier for the Americans. I'm not, uh, living in the U.S. right now. And nobody managed to say Katharina right, so I just shortened it to Kate here. All right. So um, Katharina, is that the right name? Is it proper? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. good. So Nomad Nation, let me tell you a little bit about Katharina. So is an ex- she's an expert partner, coach, helping women in transition around the world. She's on a mission to empower relocating spouses to find their own professional identity. As an expert partner herself, she has lived and worked in five different countries and has used her own experiences in combination with coaching education and research in the field of expatriate management to make the modern challenges of expat partners more transparent. She also has a blog called Share the Love. She is originally from Germany and currently located in the United States. So, okay, this is a very short overview of who you are. Can you tell us where you're at, what's happening in your world right now? Beautiful summary. Thank you. Um, yeah, right now I'm still focusing all my uh, work on expert partners and my mission is to help them finding their professional identity abroad. And I remember when I moved to the US, I was so shocked to see that most expert partners I met have felt very lonely when it comes to career planning. They felt left behind and they didn't show any confidence and when talking about their career plans. 
And I was like, okay, how can it be that we in Germany, for example, are discussing about female leadership and all this kind of stuff. And here I am now in the US, 2018, and nobody seems to care that expert partners are somehow left behind career-wise. So yeah, that was my uh, mission to change that. Yes, and you're doing such a beautiful job, Kate. And Nomad Nation, I really recommend you to check in her great articles and blogs. I love your latest opinion piece. I will put the link in the show notes of this episode. And you also did an interesting survey on this whole field and trend of digital nomads. So it's almost not a trend anymore. It's almost mainstream now to be a digital nomad. And I'm like, it's time for us to realize that it's not even something new. We have to jump on that train and use that opportunity. But there are some differences. So before we go into this, I'd like to know what got you to start the survey and go and interview digital nomads and see what are the differences between, uh, you know, expat partner situation and their situation. Yeah, I was looking for some fresh insights into the whole topic. And I kept seeing digital nomads covered in media again and again, like people working abroad, doing it remotely, having like a portable career. And I kept thinking that would be awesome for expert partners. Like, why is the media coverage so positive when it comes to digital nomads and so negative when it comes to the expert partner who is leaving her or his career behind for, for a relationship or something like that. So I thought, okay, how can we use that trend right now? What can we learn? And so I started to dig deeper. That's fantastic. And I can't wait to discuss that. So let's start just with the basic now, the definition of digital nomads. I'm sure all of you know Nomad Nation have heard this term before, but let's put some more explanation behind it. How would you define digital nomads, Kate? For me, it's the mindset question. So most digital nomads I talked to, they wanted to leave their nine to five job behind. They were screaming for something different, for more independence. They have been frustrated with a cubicle job, for example. So they have been searching for ways to travel the world, to take the job with them. And they were seeking independence and flexibility. While when we take the expert partner, for example, in case the family got transferred by a company, They might not have chosen the country they are moving to. They might not have chosen the duration they are staying in the country. So the initial trigger is very different. The one person, the nomad, decided to to live this life, decided actively for this kind of lifestyle and prepared for that, Mm -hmm. while the expert got pushed into the pool and then like, you know, please swim now and uh, (laughs) was kind of left behind maybe. Interesting. Oh, yeah, that's exactly the point here. What are this big difference between, you know, digital nomads and, and expat partners who want to build a portable business? And you've, you've mentioned one of the points here is, which is the motivations, and we'll talk about it a little more. But um, I still want to highlight a little bit the aspect of the lifestyle. So I found the definition is that they're location independent people who use technology at their work platform. And I think that's one of our message here, both of us, I think using technology today to be able to build a business and a job and a career that's location independent. And I think that's one of the base main thing that we want to use also as an opportunity when we want to build a portable business. But like you said, the first thing the difference that you mentioned, I like when you mentioned the fact that the motivations are different and the mindset is different. That uh, So I see three differences between digital nomads and expat partners. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is also because I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but a small piece of me was always cringing when people would compare tandem nomads to digital nomads or compare portable business to digital nomads. And I want to make a bit of a distinction there. Uh, It's not that I think that it's not good to be a digital nomad, but I do think that the context is so different. The challenges that come with expatriation are so different than when we want to be a digital nomad that we need to recognize those. So I will share with you, Kate, what I think are the differences and let me see how you, what you think about it. But for me, the first thing is the lifestyle. Um, commonly, digital nomads are pictured of these people who are on the beach with the laptops. I think that's a bit of a stereotype. I don't think all digital nomads just do that. But 
I do think that the lifestyle is more short term than expats. Expats move their whole lives from a country to another and stay in each country longer, but also move with their whole family and their boxes <laughs> and have to find a school, have to find doctors locally. And even in terms of, we'll talk about regulations too, but in terms of taxes, they're detached from home. So it's a whole different lifestyle initially. And the second thing you mentioned it is their motivation. Digital nomads just want to leave their jobs, leave their day-to-day -day life and proactively decide to move and travel the world. Or expats also proactively make that decision, but it's usually the employer that sends the, part, the expat abroad and the family follows, which is again, a different circumstance. And the final one, I think it's a big one. And um, Katharina and I met in FIGT this year, and we also discussed the regulations behind it, which are much different. Expats have much more barriers, such as visas, regulations, and, and things like that that stop them from sometimes working in a local country, whereas digital nomads, as most of the time, they're on visa tour, uh, tourist visas, or there's even countries like Thailand who create visas that are specifically for digital nomads. So... Is, these are, for me, the three big differences that would say make it a bit more easier when we're digital nomads to build that freedom, to build a portable business. But do you see anything else that you want to add to that? No, absolutely. I totally agree. So when I picture expats, they're moving with a container often and with all the strings attached with a family, maybe even children. And um, it's all about, am I able to work? Is there a work permit? A lot of strings attached while the digital nomad packs a backpack and is off and normally travels even alone. There are often no children and just slowly there are more and more couples doing it together and slowly there are more and more families, but there are less strings attached. So whenever the visa, the work permit is not valid anymore, they, they leave the country, they come back, there's much more flexibility. Whereas uh, as an expert partner, I just can't leave the US behind like that when, when my work permit is not valid anymore or my visa is not valid. Like my actions have consequences for my whole family. So that is quite, quite different. So yeah, good point there. Yeah, you summed it up really nicely. Thank you for that. And um, I've noticed, and we will have an episode soon about a trend of families moving digitally and they homeschool their kids, but not everybody can do that. So that's again, <laughs> another story, but very good summary. So we know that now we've set it up. Okay, it is much easier in a way to be a digital nomad than build a portable business as an expat and as a global nomad and as an expat partner. So for me, that's the difference between global nomads and digital nomads somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that there are differences and it is sometimes easier for digital nomads. But now I'm thinking, and I think this is why I wanted to bring you up. I love the fresh input that you also bring about the mindset they want to have is how can we take benefit and learn from what digital nomads are doing? So what is accordingly to you According to you, um, you know, what can we learn from them? Yeah, so I got curious as well. So I did like a survey. I, do, I did two different surveys actually about career planning in general. And I sent them out to expert partners and I sent them out to digital nomads. And then I did like one-to-one -one interviews afterwards to follow up. And interestingly enough, the bottom line was that when I was talking to expert partners, Often they have been lacking a bit of confidence the longer they are out of the job and the longer they are living abroad and the longer they are seeking for this, what should I do professionally? While when I was talking to the digital nomads, they have been bursting with confidence. Uh, like I had to slow them down actually sometimes to, to get what they're actually doing. So <laughs> when I asked them about their skill set, they have been very, very confident like listing all of them proving to me why and what clients do they serve and what do they do as a business and it was all about themselves their lifestyle decision their business so a lot of confidence here and when I was talking to the expert partners there was this doubt sometimes uh, especially for those who are living abroad for a bit longer and who are out of this job routine a bit longer and um, experience less acknowledgement from the work environment so that was very interested from, interesting for me to see that this mindset is so different. The one person seems to have it all, uh, it, does, it makes sense. And the other person is like, what am I doing here? 
Wow, this is so interesting. And you do work with expat partners, so you know them very well. And you've done this research talking to digital nomads. So why do you think expat partners have more self-confidence issues versus these digital nomads? And we've been talking about that in the past who sometimes don't even have those skills and sell them really well. Yeah, um, in no way should any expert partner hide because they all have the skills. And when I ask specific questions, yes, they, they came up. So uh, I'm sure it's the same level of experience. Um, so there's nothing that the digital nomad is better skilled. It's just like the self-branding, the marketing is way better for the, for the digital nomad. Um, there are different factors. Maybe like our society seems like, oh, digital nomad, wow, that is brave. What a great idea, what, what courage you have to choose this kind of lifestyle. And the expert partner is confronted with families and friends who are asking, okay, so you left your job for your partner. So, you know, do, don't you believe in feminism and stuff like that? So we have the social factor here. Hmm. but also it's a preparation phase. So like the digital nomad decided actively to live this lifestyle. He or she prepared for that. Like normally they told me they prepared half a year before while still working in the corporate job, uh, preparing in terms of creating those skills, creating a website and stuff like that before leaving the country and going into this new form of life. While the expert partner, okay, she or he quit the job and then moved abroad but it's not really the one feeling in the driver's seat because maybe the company has chosen or maybe the partner has chosen. So it's, it's all of this. It's a mix of being confident and having chosen this lifestyle or not. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think it's, like you said, it's also a mindset thing. You know, it's, it's, we can see like technically there's no difference between being a digital nomad and having a portable business. But at the end of the day is how we approach it and how we prepare for it. So how would you recommend expat partners to get into that mindset, but also prepare for it, even if it's, they already moved abroad? Yeah. So one question I asked in the survey was, do you care what other people think about your choice? Mm. And the digital nomad said, no, it's, it's my choice. It's my life. I don't care what other people think. So they, they focus on themselves and on improving their skill set. Uh, while expats often said, yeah, I really do care because they, they keep communicating that to me and I keep questioning myself. So um, one tip is really stay focused, stay true to yourself. What do you want? And uh, the second is like we discussed shortly about the work permit issue and so on. And I agree, we can't just start working abroad when we don't have a work permit. But in no way can we not start uh, training ourselves. So you don't need a work permit to go somewhere online or offline to learn something new and to think about, okay, what skill could I use to establish a portable career afterwards? Because let's face it, it might not be the last country we're living in right now. And maybe we have a work permit in the next country. Maybe we're returning back home. So let's use the time we have here to improve our skill set. Mm, correct. That's so good. And how is there anything else you'd like to add on what you learned from this survey? I learned I, another question was like, you know, what kind of skills do you need in terms of soft skills? Mm. And the top five skills named like open-mindedness and stuff like that have been exactly the same. So digital nomads and extra partners named the same skills. Mm -hmm. So when we have the same skills, uh, it all comes down to self-branding. And uh, I encourage every expert partner to get better in self-branding. Promote your story. Uh, moving abroad, leaving a job behind, uh, leaving family and friends behind is a, is a brave thing. Let's use that and not making an excuse when we are in an interview situation and we have to excuse why we left our job behind. No, let's tell like, wow, we did this and I learned this and this and that. And, and let's turn it into something positive. And that we can really learn from digital nomads, this self-branding attitude. Excellent. I love that. I think it's so important to understand that at the end of the day, we're not victims. And, and we need to, I think, we need to convince ourselves first before we can brand ourselves to others. And I think that's where it starts, but realizing that it was your choice to move abroad. And maybe you did not realize that you had some opportunities to start your own portable business or that the portable business you're 
developing, there is space for it to grow, for instance. So I do think that it's important to build that self-confidence first before we start talking to others because it trans people feel, you know, when we lose, when we don't feel confident, people will always feel it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're totally right. It might have been a decision by a company, but at the end, it was your personal decision to say yes to that opportunity. And the moment you accept that, it was kind of your choice as well. And you're putting yourself back in the driver's seat. You can start planning for your future. Yeah, be in the driver's seat, even if you're an accompanying partner, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So this is, um, is there any, because you've been speaking to all of them and a lot of uh, digital nomads, is there any resources you recommend? Or I will put in the link, Nomad Nation, like I said, the report that I think is super interesting to read. And also the link to Katarina's research uh, and, and survey. So go to tandemnomads.com slash 130 when you'll be able to find, download the report and find the survey of Katarina. But uh, I would like to see if there's any other resources you would like to recommend for all of those who are listening and want to learn more about the digital nomads. Sphere. Yeah, totally. I learned the most when following Facebook groups. There are tons and tons of digital nomad Facebook groups. There are even one focusing only on women, focusing only on specific business ideas. So just follow along. You don't have to be a digital nomad to join those kind of groups. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so read what others are asking, uh, get more insights, and then maybe do the same what I did. Just contact somebody who speaks to you with a, you know similar hobbies or like coming from different uh, similar countries or something like that and ask them hey would you be okay having a phone call for 10 minutes and just exchange our experience so yeah these are like my two tips facebook groups and get in touch definitely and facebook groups i think we're both i wonder if we didn't meet in one of those I guess so, yeah. It's possible, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is one called Digital Global Girls, DNG, yeah. and I love yeah. that group. And that's it's one where, of the best. Yeah, so I will put the link in the show notes of this episode for those of you who are listening and are interested. And I love your advice, okay, that pick up the phone and ask the talk. This One thing that makes this community special, especially a women community, I don't know if it's a just an impression that I have, but they're willing to talk. They're willing to exchange their tips. And these communities are so helpful and supportive. So don't hesitate to jump in and ask questions because you can learn so much from them. So Absolutely. that's that's for sure. Katarina, you've been sharing so many great things here. Is there anything you'd like to add or a message you'd like to really you know, portray to our community here, to the global nomads and the nomad nation. I'm just happy that we are bringing this facet of digital nomads into the whole expert partner discussion. It's important because it's uh, positively portrayed in the media that only can help us as expert partner. And it's good that we are talking about more and more about remote work, taking your career portable and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure that the, the more digital nomads there are out there, the better it is for us as expert partners. Definitely, yes. And I love what you're saying, what you're trying to do, Kate, by changing the narrative of the dual career challenges of expert partners. And I think this is also what you're trying to say and what you're doing with your blog, trying to change the narrative. Because if we all change the narrative, then the media will also talk about it differently. So it starts from within by embracing, you know, this opportunity we have. So I like that you shared that. So can you tell us more about your services and how you help expert partners? Yeah, so I'm offering like coachings, of course, but also I figured out that many people, especially in the beginning, are not ready to be coached right away. So I try to put as much information in, in articles, which is free on my website, but also like in e-papers that I'm distributing over my website, so that everybody can get the compromise information when thinking about stuff like, okay, I'm moving apart. What should I do with my career? Uh, how can this do a career thing work? And maybe I have to have I have to change my career. So what to do now and how to apply abroad. So I I'm putting all this information on my website, but also like in the workbooks I'm I'm selling over my website. And yeah, I'm also doing coaching if somebody is actually more prepared and willing to start right now. Fabulous, fantastic. So where can we find all of this information? All information uh, all on my website uh, on sharethelove.blog. 
Fantastic. And you're doing also a great job, very active on Instagram, if you want to follow so Katharina. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights here. I hope we got the message through. We are very different, but let's use that as an opportunity to learn from them. And there's nothing that stops us from doing what digital nomads are doing. Nomad Nation, so make sure to go to tandemnomads.com slash 130 to download this really interesting report from SCORE. And also you'll find there the link of Katerina's information and her survey for digital nomads. Go to tandemnomads.com slash 130. Thank you very much, Amel. Thank you. So Nomad Nation, I hope you got lots of inspiration here and stay tuned to turn your challenges into wonderful opportunities. <laughs> <laughs>